Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we are going to talk about covariance estimation. And these are the items that we'll go through. We won't be going into the details, but I'll just mention very briefly what these methods are, and I give you some intuition on that. These are the references. Uh, just a warning that these are heavy on maths. As you already already know, in what we are trying to do in covariance or variance in general is we are trying to find the spread of data as shown here by the orange dots. And oh, there is another term called as precision, which is uh, related to covariance. So if we look at the matrix here on the left hand side, that's let's say that's our covariance matrix. So the diagonal elements are the variances and the off-diagonal elements are the covariances between features. So let's say this is feature one, feature two, feature three, then the, co the covariance between feature one and feature two and feature one is this and feature two and feature two itself is just one. Now, if we take an inverse of covariance matrix by this particular line of code shown below, then we can get the precision matrix, which is shown here. So it informs us about uh, exactly the opposite of what covariance is trying to tell us. And for terminologies, what is an ill-conditioned matrix? If we are trying to solve a set of equations, uh, Ax is equal to B, where let's say we have the value of A uh, given by this matrix, we have value of B given by this matrix, and we are trying to find the value of X. So we get are 2 and 0. Now, if we make a slight change in the value of uh, b, for example, instead of 2, we uh, changed it to 2.001, then the output values for the x change drastically. Uh, so instead of 2, 0, we now have 1, 1 as the output value. So that's uh, Ill con that could be considered as an ill conditioned matrix depending on. Uh, the type of analysis you're working on. So uh, the general uh, uh, idea is that a small change makes a big change in the output and how the, the range of the big change is sub, it depends on what you're trying to work with. And the reason why it's important to uh, overcome this issue is because uh, the covariance matrix, if it is ill-conditioned, then it, if it, when it is used in further downstream calculations, it can uh, produce results that are erroneous. So, if there are large errors in the covariance matrix, then the output values would be way off. Uh, here is an example, a uh, kind of visual example of how the heat map of the covariance matrix. We have the data here uh, where the points are arranged in a circle. So we have this covariance matrix and this is the precision or inverse covariance. And here we have the covariance uh, matrix for data points that are arranged in the straight line. And here is the precision for that. Nothing specific to observe in here, uh, but I just wanted to get you a visual feel of how the, how covariance matrices may look like. Then here is another example. Let's say we have this original image and we're trying to, uh, if we try to work with this as each column of pixel is a different feature, it's uh, not, it doesn't work that way if we are trying to compare different images. But in this case, let's just assume that each column is a feature and each row is a sample. So if we use this image as a matrix and find a covariance for on this set of data, then we get a matrix that looks like this. Now the inverse of this matrix is completely different. It's almost blank as in here. Uh, and if we can get, if we invert the precision matrix again, then we can get values that are closer to the original covariance matrix as we have here on the left hand side. The reason why I have this image of image plus noise is to avoid singular matrix error while inversion. 
and here is another uh, same image uh, but just a part of that image and we can see the uh, coherence matrices and the precision matrix now why we are talking about coherence and why is it impor important to uh, kind of regularize the coherence matrix and uh, from what I've read in the literature and the sources uh, I've mentioned earlier is that coherence matrix is a main part in calculating stock returns so uh, and it can pose different uh, problems uh, so generally I'm not an expert on this but uh, here's what I've read uh, the practice is to compute sample coherence matrix from historical data and now if your uh, data that you are trying to analyze is much larger than the historical observations then what happens is uh, what seems to happen is that the calculated coherence matrix has a lot of errors it has all coefficients with very large values or very small values and these large or small very large or very small values if a matrix coherence matrix with these values is used then those values throw off on the downstream uh, calculated values or maybe stock returns or uh, other values and so uh, the basic idea in shrinkage or regularization then is to pull uh, add weights to these values or completely remove them so one of the ways is to pull down the high values towards the center or pull up the low values extremely low values towards the center and there are different methods implemented in scikit-learn the very first one is basic shrinkage and uh, it is given by this particular function right here where we have the alpha coefficient that controls the shrinkage and uh, that is the bias variance trade-off next there is a ledoit wolf shrinkage and what this method does is it minimizes the mac or mean squared error between the estimated and real coherence matrix uh, this uh, we are not going to discuss this in uh, further detail than saying that uh, the way this is calculated is by this equation right here uh, if you need more mathematical insight then i've listed the paper down below here as a reference as the takeaway message is that this was one method and then this is another method um, that reduces the mac and then there is another method that is based on top of the lidoid wolf's method uh, and this oracle approximating shrinkage oas is a method that yields seems to yield a lower value for the MAC or mean squared error. Again, I've listed the source here if you are interested in reading further on this particular topic. I know that I've not I'm not going into details of these methods, uh, but if you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Then for sparse inverse covariance. Uh, in this case, let's imagine uh, on the right hand side we have these two mat uh, visualizations for two matrices. The top one is the covariance matrix, that is a true covariance matrix, and we have bottom one, there is a true precision matrix. This is a sparse matrix, so most of the values are zero, and then these are the values that have uh, non zero values. Now, in the top row, we can see that the uh, empirical values are much farther away from the true values but the ledoid wolf is pretty close to the true except one important point to note is that the off diagonal elements are mostly not there so these two values they are they are uh, instead of saying not there let's say they are away from what the true values are whereas graphical lasso cv he has is closer to the true values of the coherence matrix and same 
similar is the case with the precision matrix uh, where the ledoid wolf seems to preserve the diagonal nature of the coherence matrix and loses uh, the values for the off diagonal elements there is yet another method which is a uh, minimum covariance determinant uh, which is part of the robust covariance estimation methods in scikit-learn so the idea is that if the covariance matrix has outliers in it then again it can create problems in downstream calculations and so uh, there is this method which can help find uh, the outliers and either discard them completely or add a weight to those outliers so that their importance uh, is reduced and so the way it is done is uh, the number of ob the observations are found by this particular relation number of samples plus number of features plus one divided by two and uh, then uh, the empirical covariance is calculated for those and whichever has the smallest determinant uh, that yield the pures are considered to yield the pure subset of observations and then those are used to compute the standard estimates of location and variance now for this uh, minimum covariance determinant to work uh, the number of samples has to be greater than five times the number of features so that was it for this video uh, in this video uh, uh, we breezed through uh, several topics in coherence estimation methods that are implemented in scikit-learn uh, we did not go into much detail uh, but we will definitely look at the implementation part of this in scikit-learn and see uh, how these methods can be useful in our data analysis if you have any comments or suggestions please let me know in the comment section below i hope to see you all in the next video until then please like share and subscribe thank you